nothing compared to late night TV, huh? No, no, it's not. This is, this is a little bit different. Uh, and I like you guys a little bit more. It was an audience out there, and I, I didn't really see too many familiar faces, so caught me off guard, but I just rolled with it. What was the process? How did you get to be on Passport? Yeah, so uh, my wife got, D, got a, like a DM from somebody um, after she commented on something like, do you want to be on TV? And she commented, of course, and they were like, hey, well, do you know any coaches? She's married to a coach. So all of a sudden, she tells me, hey, I need you to be on this Zoom. Okay, I'll be on this Zoom, and you're going to be playing password against these people. Okay, that's cool. I thought it was a scam whole entire time. I'm like, this is a scam, but my wife's asking me to do it. I don't want to argue with her right now, so I'm just going to keep on going. The first round turned to the second round, turned to the third round. All of a sudden, I'm getting an email over like, hey, don't tell anybody you're going to be on password. The one person I did have to tell was Coach Fleck, uh, but he kept that secret for me. He held it down, um, and then I, I went ahead and I flew out to L.A., and we got that thing done. So it was, a, it was an awesome experience overall, um, but I, I wish I would have came home with the win. That's what I'll say. I'm competitive in nature. So. You think about Jaws here last year, he's one of the best pass rushers with pressures in the Big Ten. How would you characterize him here last year, and where are you having him try to take a step forward here in 24? Uh, so... Last year, I think he's just tipping the iceberg of what he can be. Now, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden he's going to wake up tomorrow and be a 14-sack job. I don't think that. I think there's a lot of small details that he needs to work on, and I'm hard on him. And I think that you should be. When you really love uh, somebody that you're working with, when you love young people, you want to be real with them, you want to be honest with them, and you want to be able to demand, demand the development that they want to happen in their life. Um, so. All off-season long, we've been working on a lot of little details, uh, but also being able to go ahead and increase his rush IQ. How can you match up rush and coverages? How can you rush different in certain, dif uh, certain situations, uh, whether it's uh, a green zone or quote-unquote red zone situation or backed up coming out or whether you want to go ahead and rush just in the logo zone, right? We take all those things into account and we make sure that this guy is equipped to go ahead and be a better pass rusher than he was last year. So Ja is... Kept very humble in that defensive line room, not only by me, but by his peers, uh, because everybody knows in that room that he has a lot of room to grow. Sorry to backtrack, but did you ever play Password before, or was that your first experience? So I had played Password before, but just like with, with my buddies and my friends and like the, the take-home version of Password. So I had never played it with Jimmy Kimmel and Jimmy Fallon and Kiki Palmer, and I'm looking at him like, okay, don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up. So that was kind of the deal with that. But it was, it was fun overall. It's kind of like charades, not really, but kind of. You guys were talking about the next phase of the pass, which plan, what are some of the elements that you're emphasizing in the spring and then into the fall? Uh, so one thing that we talked about highly was pass rush conditioning. Um, and I think that that's something that's uh, looked over a lot uh, by not only defensive line coaches, but just coaches in general. How many reps, how many moves, how many things can you stack uh, in a two-minute drill or in a time where, you know, sacks will be able to go ahead and eliminate uh, an offense from being able to drive the football. Uh, so pass rush conditioning is a really big thing for us. Pass rush chemistry is a big thing for us. Devin, Ja, JLR, Strig, how can you four rush together? Anthony, how can you rush well with Theo? Uh, Martin, how can you rush well with Luther? So all these different components are kind of plugged into that phase two. And then uh, Kaizen. We talk about Kaizen, which is 1% positive change. So 1% positive change every single day on your pass rush being able to increase and trend in the right direction. Uh, so that's phase two. What have you seen out of Jalen this spring so far in, in his development of his, of his game? Uh, well, well Jalen's extremely introspective. Jalen's very, very smart. So the thing that I want Jalen to do is I want him to let loose a little bit more and just enjoy the game of football. Uh, so that's the thing I'm focusing with Jalen on. And you guys might be like, well, that's a pretty easy task. Well, for some people, it's not, right? So Jalen wants to know what all four people on the field are doing on the defensive line perspective at the same time. But Jalen, you have to master your position and then have fun at playing and letting loose in your position. Um, so the fact that JLR can play defensive end, he can play nose, he can play tackle, is going to aid him in so many different ways. In, in, a, in a positive kind of realm, uh, but the thing I want JLR to do this year is to just let it loose and go play, and I think he really is capable of doing that. He split time 50-50 between five and three last year. We saw him at that open practice only play inside. Is that kind of the plan for him? Well, he's going to continue to master five. He's going to master three. Uh, and then don't be surprised if you see him in a little bit of one. Uh, we talk about 
what makes elite pass rushers elite, right? And it's the fact that they can play and rush from a five, a three, a one, sometimes a zero standing up, sometimes a wide nine. Uh, and I think JLR has the bandwidth and the capacity to be able to go ahead and master multiple positions at once. So that position versatility is something that we're really going to emphasize with him this offseason. Um, well, Kyler was just that mega super pack a punch of energy, right? Like, you know, he just run through a brick wall. Uh, the thing that was cool was when he left. Now you could see everybody looking to find ways they could play like Kyler in certain instances. Uh, we were sitting in film the other day and talking about a certain type of move. And I'm like, Martin, this is not your style of move yet. It will be. And I said, I want you to go ahead and do this and name something different. He was like, oh, like KB used to do. Yes, like KB used to do. So they're being able to take things that they learned from him and transform it into their own style. And I think that's like the lasting remnants of leadership. And that's what you want to be able to do. And that's how you leave your alma mater, you know, in the best light. What was it like to be elevated to assistant head coach and just kind of what's that like to have that familiar leadership on the staff? It, it's been amazing. Um, coach Fleck, he called me in the office. We had a very long discussion and conversation. And right before I walked out after he let me know the good news, he was like, look at you. He was like, you were just out there running around in pads. Now you're the assistant head coach. He was like, look at you. And it was a really, really cool uh, mentor, mentee, kind of like a father-son moment uh, between him and I. But uh, he's been giving me the responsibility of an assistant head coach. Um, he's been holding me to the standard. So nothing's going to change from that perspective. Uh, but it's been a blast so far. What's the next step for Strigow? I think the next step for Danny Strigow is to continue improving his pass rush. Uh, not only that, but to capitalize on making the plays he should make. Uh, you look at Ohio State, um, he's dropping as a low hole player, ball flies over top of his head, shoots his arms up, another player on our team knocked it down. Uh, but I'm looking at him like, dude, you can catch those, and then you're fast enough where we might be able to get a little bit of yardage back off of you being able to intercept that ball. So he's our Swiss Army knife, and I always mess with him in that way. But in a very serious way, in a serious note, um, he's a guy that could go ahead and take off for us this year if he just focuses on all the little things. We could use him in so many different capacities. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does. What's, what's the next step for Anthony? I think the next step for Anthony is just continuing to trend in the right direction. We know he's big. He's long, he's extremely athletic. Uh, but the thing with him last year was, was a lot of hesitation. Okay, now you've played the snaps against UNC. You've played against ULL. You have two TFLs against Bowling Green. Now what do you do with that? Um, and the thing that he does with it is he becomes more comfortable in uncomfortable situations on the field. Okay, understand the situation. Understand where your attention to detail needs to lie. Okay, let's go ahead and plug that thing into the scheme and let's just roll. Um, we've been seeing him lead a lot of the younger guys this spring, which is spectacular. Um, and, and sometimes it's a... It's, again, another father-son moment where you got to kind of watch your kids and let them just be kids. And I don't want to impede on the leadership of Anthony Smith, but I just want to hover and I want to listen. Uh, and I'll listen to him talking to Martin, and I'll listen to him talking to Theo and guys like Sam Macy, and he'll be teaching them. And I get really proud, but i got to continue to teach him as well. Uh, the sky's the limit for that young man, but I'll say one thing. He really loves the game. That dude is a dude who just loves ball, right? And you, and you go to his area where he's from, you go to the Houston, Texas area, and it's ball, ball, ball since before they could probably even say the word ball, right? Um, Theo is extremely intelligent, and every single word that I write, or that I say, excuse me, he writes down. And that's very, very interesting to me. Somebody else who does that is JLR. Everybody in my room takes notes, and they take very, very elite notes, but they're all different. Theo and JLR both write down every single word that I say. If I take a deep breath, they'll probably write like asterisk breath or sigh or something like that and then continue on. Uh, but his growth has been immaculate, uh, especially for a young guy, hand placement, violent, uh, footwork, uh, stunt steps, all those things you watch Theo do. Um, and you're like, wow, this guy's going to take off. Still very raw, young, uh, but he has a, a lot of potential. The biggest thing was just about who he was. Um, you, you, you saw what he did. You saw how he performed. You know how he prepared. You saw how hard he played. Uh, but who is this guy? 
And that was a guy in my room every single Sunday who wanted to know how he could play better, how he could lead better, how he could take this room to the next level. And that's all that he cared about. It was never about me, 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 me. It was how could I improve the room? Um, and when you start to share that with a couple of teams, they get really, really intrigued by him. Uh, and then I think his stock goes up a little bit. Um, and that's no fabrication, that's no lie. Um, that's the truth. Sometimes he'd sit in my room and he would go ahead and he'd almost come to tears because he was so passionate about making sure that this defense played at a high level. Um, so that's who Kyler Ball is, deep down to the bones. Murray, you got one more? So they say active in the portal in December, January. Do you anticipate doing that again this year after, after spring ball? Yeah, well, I think we'll evaluate uh, after spring ball, and we'll kind of leave that to Coach Fleck to see if we're going to get active in the portal or those, those different types of things. Um, I know we're going to be active in recruiting these 25 guys and then continuing on with the 26s and 27s, but we'll kind of leave it to Coach Fleck moving forward in that portal direction.